for the week. Really glad you're joining us in this way. Uh, today I'm standing on the aisle of the meeting house, uh, the one that's on the right hand side as you come in the front door or the left hand side if you're looking down from the pulpit kind of area. And one of the reasons that I thought I would stand here and record Thought for the Week is that even just standing in this spot and looking around me, and hopefully the camera uh, will do justice to it a bit, there are evidences all around of the gifts that people have exercised for God's glory and the good of people here in this place. Uh, a little bit behind the camera is the vestibule, and of course in the present day and in days gone by, people have exercised their gifts of hospitality there, uh, welcoming people for Sunday morning worship or at a different occasion, and extending to them a warm smile and a cheery greeting. Uh, over to my right hand side, there's some material that's been used for our prayer week, and gifts have been used to produce that and to set it all up and to help people to pray. Uh, on the wall behind me, you'll see some of those magnificent banners, uh, only a few of the many magnificent banners that we possess. And we're grateful for the gifts that have, exercise, or that have been exercised to produce those too. Uh, then in the building itself, of course, lots of gifts over a long period of time have been exercised not only to make the building, uh, but to keep it in the magnificent order that, thank God, it continues to be in. Or up near the front, I think maybe over my shoulder or around the side of me, uh, you can just get a glimpse of, of the piano, uh, maybe of the organ, and where other instruments are utilised too. And we are so thankful uh, that so many people exercise musical gifts to help us lift our voices and song to God. Uh, and really in truth, I've only mentioned a handful of gifts that most immediately come to mind. Lots of different gifts are used. And if I were to look around in more detail, there would be evidence of that everywhere to be seen. And order a service sheet sitting around, perhaps gifts employed to produce that. Uh, lots of different gifts exercised by lots of different people to the glory of God and for the blessing of others. That's so much to be thankful for. Uh, to some extent, we were thinking about that on Sunday past, uh, when we had the really exciting occasion of Ruth's commissioning as our youth ministry and congregational discipleship coordinator. And we were looking at Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 13, uh, and how pastor teachers are called to equip God's people for works of service and the joy that there is for all Christians in serving the Lord and humbly, lovingly serving others in his name. And as part of that, for a little while, we were thinking of the way in which a wide variety of gifts can be used in that service. It's natural to me to follow on from that by thinking about how God has arranged things so that we need one another, so that we might depend on one another, and so that in that interdependence, we may grow in loving relationships with one another. Uh, Paul talks about that in some very famous words. He employs the analogy of the body, uh, describing the church, which is made up of God's people. It's not a building, it's a people, describing the church as the body of Christ. But maybe a little lesser known is what he also says to the Corinthian Christians in chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, verses 12 and 13. Now when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened the door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. Amen. 
a very striking portion of scripture. Among the many things that Paul has got to say to the church in Corinth, it's maybe not the thing that most immediately grabs the reader's attention. And even in the context of chapter 2, uh, where he's been talking um, about discipline in the church and the desire to restore people who have gone astray, and where he's been talking then about the church's ministry and reaching out to others uh, as the aroma of Christ. Uh, this in some ways seems like an incidental detail. And yet it's enormously significant uh, because it bears witness to how Paul the Apostle uh, saw Christianity not as a mere individual pursuit, but as something that was very much about being a united family under God. If ever there was any mere man who was capable of following the Lord as an individual by his grace, you might well have said that Paul was that man. If ever there's one person who stands out as somebody who could be spiritually mature as a follower of Jesus without needing other Christians, well, Paul is probably the fella that you would think of. And yet here Paul bears very powerful witness to the fact that he very much needs his sisters and brothers in the Lord. He had come upon what surely was in many ways an ideal situation. He went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door and that's exactly what he was looking for. That in many ways is what his heart beat it for. That's what excited him. Here he was in this place and there was opportunity to tell people about Jesus. He doesn't go into the detail, but to some extent it must have been the case that it was apparent to him that people were willing to engage, people were willing to listen. The Spirit of God was at work. There was opportunity for fruitful ministry and sharing the good news. Wow! You expect him to say how excited he was. But what does he say? I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. It's one striking indication of a thing that actually is apparent throughout Paul's letters and the story of his life as recorded in the book of Acts. And that is that he was very much a team player. Uh, much as he rejoiced in the fact that Christianity is about a personal relationship with God, much as he rejoiced in the Lord's personal grace to him and in his personal intimacy with Jesus Christ, he also knew it to be the case that God is not merely rescuing individuals. God is rescuing a family. Uh, all who belong to Jesus belong to one another. And it is the Lord's great desire to knit them to one another and to enable them to grow in love for him as they grow in love for each other. And to that end, Paul had a very conscious and strong need for his fellow Christians. Uh, to such an extent that even when a door was open for him, he couldn't contemplate going through it alone. He needed companions, fellow workers, brothers and sisters in the Lord, uh, with whom to fellowship as he went about his godly Christian calling. Well, if the Apostle Paul needed his fellow Christians, surely you and I who trust and follow Jesus today need our fellow Christians too. Uh, what a great thing to belong to a family of people who know and love the Lord. Uh, how good it is that there are a family pe of people here in Second Cumber who know and love Jesus and who are helping one another to grow in trust in him and love for him. How welcome you are to be part of that family. We'd love to see you any Sunday or any day through the week. It's a great thing to come and meet with Jesus together, to experience his love for us to put our trust in him, to live as his disciples, and to do so together. God is rescuing a family, the family of all who put their trust in Christ. 
Yeah, it's about our personal walk with God, but let's not imagine that it's merely about all being an individual. Christianity is a collective thing. Like Paul, let's trust in the Lord and interact well with our brothers and sisters as one family to the glory of his holy name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are redeeming a family, that you have made it the case that your disciples need one another, that you're teaching us to grow in love for you as we grow in love for each other. Thank you for all the gifts that are exercised here. Fan them into flame all the more, that as one family we may grow in our trust for you and love in you. Our trust in you and love for you, and that others indeed may come to join our church family to know your love and walk in your way also. It is for your great and holy sake that we ask it. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll do so again soon. God bless.